Hello, dears, and welcome to Al Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips and Practical Tips. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is a nice example of a low grade astrocytoma. So, this is a case of a 24 year old female patient who presented with uh, recurrent seizures and was found to have on imaging a small non enhancing right frontal lesion. So, they decided to go and biopsy the lesion. And these are the only fragments that were available to render a diagnosis. And on higher power magnification, some of those fragments were slightly, slightly hypercellular. Others were almost complete normal uh, brain tissue. Now, zooming in more into this fragment in particular, because this fragment and the one below that showed only the slight increase in cellularity, nothing really very impressive. Now, on higher power magnification. As you can see, there is some increase in the cellularity in comparison to normal. And I know this might be difficult because sometimes the normal, especially if it contains some inflammatory cells, might be might show this increase in uh, uh, cellularity. Uh, these fibers are the normal axons of the uh, in, uh, in neurons. These are not the uh, Rosenthal fibers. Some people might confuse them with Rosenthal fibers. Rosenthal fibers are much thicker than these and much more tortuous. These are the normal axons. And then we start to see some minimal increase in uh, cellularity. These two nuclei are just opposing each other. And this becomes slightly suggestive of potential uh, um, uh, a tumorous process. This is a normal neuron, and this is a normal oligodendroglial cell. It looks like a lymphocyte just as adjacent to the neuron. Now, another field, we start to see some abnormal shapes. These are the abnormal looking malignant astrocytes. They're just very, uh, uh, at the very end of the low spectrum of cellularity and the pleomorphism. This is perhaps the minimum with which you should start to question whether this is a tumor or not. So we start to see some pleomorphic nuclei. This is a normal neuron. These are normal oligodendroglial cells. Perhaps this is kind of abnormal shape to the nucleus, this one as well, but not really much in the way of a solid uh, uh, features for the diagnosis of malignancy. This is a third uh, uh, high power magnification field. And as you can see here, a very big in nucleus that is hyperchromatic and abnormal shape and adjacent to it is a small in nucleus. This pleomorphism, this hyperchromasia would really make you think whether this is really a neoplastic process. Whenever you see two adjacent nuclei just touching each other, this is also very suggestive of neoplastic a process as is the case here. Perhaps this aggregation of uh, uh, nuclei, abnormal uh, spatial relationship of the nuclei, because normally brain, you will not see this uh, uh, nuclei so much adjacent to each other, as well as, of course, this abnormal nucleus. There wasn't an evidence of mitosis, of course, no microvascular proliferation and no necrosis. Now, going into the stains, the single most useful stain that would really give you a solid diagnosis that this is a low-grade astrocytoma is IDH1. And this is the way actually now we write the immune stain uh, with, uh, uh, that contains some uh, sort of a mutation. So we write the name of the mutation IDH1, and then we write P donating that this is a protein. And this is the uh, 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 change in the amino acids that would really give that the mutation for the IDH1. This is the recommended way now to write the name of the mutation. And as you can see here, this is the same piece of tissue that I just showed you on the H and E, it has this brown color on higher magnification. We can see that we have a normal internal negative control. The neurons, for example, the endothelial cells are negative. And then we start to see those infiltrating cells uh, that we just saw 
on the H and E, and we were kind of suspicious whether these are malignant or not. These are a staining showing in nuclear and cytoplasmic. Remember, in nuclear and cytoplasmic staining in the presence of the neuron that is internal negative control, oligodendroglial cell internal negative control, endothelium negative internal control. This appearance supports strongly that I'm dealing with a low grade astrocytoma, a grade two astrocytoma. ATRX, if there was an evidence of loss of the nuclear stain, a clear evidence of loss of a nuclear stain, that we should also support the diagnosis that this is an astrocytic tumor, but ATRX can sometimes get very tricky. In order to read or interpret properly, I have to have internal positive control. In this case, these are the neurons, and then these are the tumor cell nuclei completely negative. So we have now IVH1 positivity by immunohistochemistry, ATRX loss of a nuclear stain, which means that this is a mutant. Both really are excellent supporter that this is a, a, a low-grade astrocytoma. P53, how to interpret P53 in a grade two or low grade astrocytoma? Remember that we need to see positive in nuclear staining. However, what is accepted by the WHO as the cutoff for positive P53 in a grade two astrocytoma is 10% only. We're not looking for 50% positive in nuclear staining. We're not looking for 80% positive in nuclear staining in order to say that P53 is positive, what we look for is only 10% of the nuclei in the field are positive with P53. Why is that? Remember that those tumors usually show very low cellularity and they infiltrate in between the normal in your, uh, uh, astrocytes and the normal cells. So what I need is only 10% of the cells in the field to be positive with P53 in order to call the tumor as positive. However, this only applies, this rule of 10% only applies to great two fibrillary infiltrative astrocytoma. We're not talking about GBM. We're not talking about medulloblastoma. These have two different, completely different rules. The CHI-67 supports what we saw that this is a very low grade astrocytoma and it was only 2% uh, or even in some fields less than, than this, almost 1%. So final diagnosis in this case, in the biopsies from the right frontal lesion, is astrocytoma IDH1 PR132H mutation, a mutant, CNS WHO, a grade two tumor. Remember that the support really came, num came number one from the H and E, where we started to see some pleomorphic nuclei and some touching in nuclei, nuclei touching each other, but this is not sufficient. I need to have more objective evidence that came from the IDH uh, 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 positive staining, donating that this is a mutant astrocytoma, and number two with the ATRX loss of the nuclear stain, and number three, the 10% positive P53, a mutant a tumor cell in nuclei. This is perhaps the minimum of an astrocytoma, uh, uh, diffuse astrocytoma that can be diagnosed with because of the extreme low cellularity. Remember that you have always to correlate with radiology in order to render the proper diagnosis. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.